So as we think about this final block of the table of duties, we've talked about the role of the pastor and the role of the church, how we all serve together to spread and promote and lift each other up in prayer and the gospel. We also talked last week about our responsibility in society, how we can serve alongside those who are in our government. And that means that we obey them. We hear their authority. What I'd failed to mention though last week is that there are instances where our government is overstepping. And so in those instances, thankfully, a lot of times here in our country, you may have heard about the governor of Kentucky ticketing people who came to a church to have a drive-through service. After just a few number of days, that was overturned. Or even here in Harris County, when, when our, our local authority said that you were going to be ticketed and fined if not wearing a mask, that again was overturned. So when our government is overstepping, we are able to step out in faith and say, this is what we are as Christians and how we, you can protect us. So today we, we talk about the table of duties in the household. And again, I'm going to show this graphic <clears throat> just because I think it's helpful to think about those, those items on our desk that are a part of our regular rhythm, things that are in our inbox of things we still need to do, things on our outbox of things we've already accomplished, and then things that we put in another box and say, it's not my job. And I, I think that's what Jolene was trying to say with the children's message today, that those tasks, those chores, they weren't her job. Someone else could do them. Someone else could take on that responsibility. And when we look at the table of duties, that's not exactly true. That each of us, regardless of age or abilities, God is calling us to serve one another. And in this, we, we see a, a number of different things. And on the Cypress Chapel app, if you go to the homepage, you can actually find the full catechism uh, right there on the homepage. Just click on that, and you can click on the table of duties for all these Bible verses. And so we first talk about jobs or the, res the responsibilities of a husband. So for those of you here, what are the responsibilities of the husband that you might say, that's not my job? I always say yes, ma'am, because if, if what, what, what's the saying? A happy wife is a happy life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but nobody happy if, if mom ain't happy. Changing the toilet. What, what else? Fixing everything. I know some husbands fix nothing. And so if you have a husband that fixes some things, that's a really good thing. Well, God tells us what the responsibility of a husband is. And so as we hear these words, I want you to focus on what this is actually saying, not what it isn't saying, okay? It says, husbands, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. And also in Colossians, it says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. When we think about this, what does this not say? It doesn't say, husbands, you're the boss. It doesn't say, husbands, you're in charge. It doesn't say, husbands, you tell your wife or your kids what to do. It says, be considerate and love them. And sometimes being considerate and loving them means making some decisions or working along with your partner, with your wife, and that's our responsibility. But to focus on what this text is actually saying versus what it is not saying is very important because in these, in all of these, it's giving directives to the individual, not to the people that they are alongside, if that makes sense. So wives, on this Mother's Day, what is the role of a wife that you may or may not like? Laundry, okay. Changing baby's diapers. Cleaning. What do you think? Cooking. How about this? Right now, teaching. Right now, having a full-time job while trying to do all these things with your kids in the house. And serving alongside your husband who may or may not be all that helpful. And so wives are patient. And this is what it says in the Bible about wives. Wives submit to your husbands as to the Lord. And also they were submissive to their own husbands like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. 
Now, this isn't saying that you should always follow your husband because he, he could be not the best guy, but this is saying that we are to work alongside our husbands, our partners in life, and to work with them. What is this not saying for husbands? Again, you do not lord over your wife, or to wives, you do not rule over your husband. And so there's some balance here with, with this. And parents, what, what's the role of a parent, you think? Tell your kids what to do all the time. Okay, parents, guide your children. Model them. Model for them. Teach them. Nurture them. Provide. You all are doing really well. This is, this is what it actually says. Fathers, and you can say mothers, do not exasperate your children. Don't overwhelm them. Don't bring things on them that, that make them feel like they're inferior. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. That, that's our job as parents, according to Ephesians chapter 6, that we lead our kids in such a way where, where they know and trust who God is. And alongside, we're going to feed them and clothe them and teach them, all those other things, but not trying to overwhelm them. And that, that's, I think, what makes it most difficult for parents is that if you have multiple children, are your kids all the same? Never. And so to know also how you minister or care for each one is going to be helpful to them. All right, kids, what, what are your jobs in the household? Obey, respect. What do you think? Listen to, maybe be trained by. This is what it says, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for that is right. Honor your father and your mother. This is the fourth commandment, which is actually the first commandment with the promise, because when it says, honor your father and your mother, it's a promise because it says, God will always watch over you in the land that I give you, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life in the earth. And so that was the hard part for all those people following Moses and their parents into the wilderness, that they obeyed their parents even when it was hard. And I know we're all going through a difficult situation right now. We're obeying our parents and, and having them be the teacher and the PE instructor and everything that's going on makes it even more difficult for us. It talks about workers of all kinds. So with workers, it says, serve hold heart, wholeheartedly as if you serve the Lord, not men. You're serving the Lord with what you were doing. Because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is slave or free. And also then to employers and supervisors, masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. We all follow the same master. We all follow the same teacher, which is God. And so as we care for others, it's our reflection of what we have received from God. Yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. So regardless of our position in life, whether you're high up on, on the pyramid or way down here as you're building yourself up, our role with God remains the same, that we are his children. There's also instructions for youth that says, young men, basically, humble yourself, don't think you know everything, and listen to those that God has put in your life. It says this to widows, who is in need and left all alone, puts her hope in God and continues night and day to pray and ask God for help. The widow who lives for pleasure is dead even while she lives. So even as individuals have a change of course in life, God is still protecting and watching over them. So we get to these final statements to everyone. And what, what, what do you think Martin Luther talks about in Romans 13, 9, and then also 1 Timothy 1? What, what do you think could be said to everyone, fathers, mothers, parents, children, workers, employers, youth, widows. What does this all boil down to? Exactly, love. Love your neighbor as yourself. How you care for your spouse or your kids or your workers or, or those people who are even above you, that is what showcases who God is. All of these things are summed up in love your neighbor as yourself. And in 1 Timothy, Paul is writing to his young leader in the church and saying, I urge that requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. 
That's for your church. That's for your pastor. That's for your government and its leaders. And that's for all those in your household. And brothers and sisters, I know that this seems like a huge list. And we're all going to fail to do it well. Right? Are we going to to be successful in following God's command and loving our, our neighbor as yourself? Are we going to be able to listen to our parents or our spouse or even our kids sometimes? We'd be patient with them or in the workplace or with the government. We're not. But we understand as Christians that each day as we get up is a new day for baptismal promise. Each day when we get up, we have this to think about, and this is from Martin Luther. Let each his lesson learn with care, and all the household well shall fare. We're going to learn from our mistakes. We're going to go to God and to those that we fail to serve, and we're going to ask God and say, I've messed up today. Remind me of your love, your forgiveness. Remind me of Jesus that was sent to the cross to die for us because we can't do it ourselves. And reflect on the promise that God has for us. With the table of duties, I know that we're all going to find where God has placed us, and it's going to change over time. Your role as a parent might shift as your kids begin to get older, and you start going to them for advice mostly about electronics. But going to them for advice and help guidance as well. I know a lot of people are searching right now. A lot of people are asking, God, where do I fit with this new transition? If I've lost my job, am I, am I looking for a new identity in Christ? Or with, with not being able to, to go out and do things as normal, things seem different. But each day go out, Try to see how God is using you for that day. Not to overwhelm you with thinking, what's my six-month plan? What's my year plan? Because a lot of us don't know what that looks like. But on this day today, on Mother's Day, what's your plan? How can, we, how can we learn a lesson from yesterday in seeing how God has put us in a place to serve him today? May God restore you. May he connect you with your household, with your church and even with our society, to be his light here in this place. Let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for putting us in a situation, in, in a location here in Cyprus, Texas, and around the world where you have called us to be a part of your family. We're nobody except for being washed by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. You have called us into faith in you. We give you thanks that through this gift, We have life in you. In Jesus' name, amen.